Now let's move to the next topic which is about the states of matter. Okay. So as we have learned during our elementary days or even on high school that we have actually at uh, three states of matter. However, there are actually six already states of matter. So we will know about those other three states of matter as we go along with this uh, topic. Okay. So first we're going to discuss about the 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 common okay states of matter you have your solid liquid and the gas so we will describe them according to their particles okay their shape their volume and compressibility okay so the particles of solid they are actually closely packed and organized okay as as you can see here on this uh on this uh, figure you notice that the particles are close together and organized in terms of solid. How, while in liquid, it's close to each other but disorganized. Okay? It's close to each other but it's actually disorganized in liquid. Okay? However, in gases, the particles are actually far apart and disorganized. That's why if you have perfume, okay, if your classmate uh, uh, has perfume and use that perfume okay even though you are far from your classmate your act you actually can smell the odor of the uh, perfume okay or even your classmate uh, farts okay so you can actually even though you are far away from your classmate that farts okay you can actually smell the odor of the fart okay because the gas has the gas particles are actually far away to each other. So it actually occupies a bigger space than the liquid and the solid. And it's actually disorganized, okay? That's why you can, the the other direction can smell it and the, uh, the opposite direction can also smell because it's actually disorganized, okay? So that's it. Okay, how about in shape? Okay, your solid has definite shape, of course. Okay, solid has its own definite shape. Okay, like it could be a square or it could be a rectangle. Okay, it has actually definite shape. And it has a definite volume. Okay, since it has a definite shape, then it could have a definite volume. Okay, the volume of the cube or the volume of this uh, chair. Okay, it has a definite volume. Compressibility, since... The particles are closely packed and organized to each other. Your solid is incompressible. So you try to compress a uh, metal. So it's very difficult to compress a metal. Am I right? Okay, or even the door. Okay, you try to compress your door there or a wood. Okay, it's very uh, hard to compress that. So that means solid are incompressible. Okay, for liquid, it has indefinite shape because it only follows the shape of the container okay when you pour water to to a container that is a square then it will follow the shape of that container if it is circle then it the shape of the water becomes also circle that's why it's in definite shape so it has no definite shape it only follows the shape of the container but in volume, it has a definite volume. That's why we have 1 liter, 2 liter of this, 3 liter of that, okay? And compressibility, since it is disorganized, the particles are disorganized, then it is slightly compressible. So liquid can be slightly uh, compressible, okay? For gas, gas now has indefinite shape, okay? Still, it also follows of whatever the shape of the, the container it contained and also it has indefinite volume since it will occupy entirely the volume of the container okay so whatever is the same gas or that you will put to a small container or a bigger container it will actually occupy the those container okay in the entire container because that is the property of the gas since the particles of the gas are very far apart and disorganized and since they are far apart gas can be compressible or they are highly compressible okay 
that's why you can uh, compress a, a balloon okay you can compress a balloon uh, that is filled with gas okay okay now let's go to other states of matter so we have actually uh, three other states of matter aside from a uh, solid liquid and gas okay number one or the fourth uh, state of matter is actually plasma okay so have you heard of plasma already okay i think so okay during your i think high school maybe you have heard about plasma so plasma is the fourth state of matter which actually consists of highly charged particles with extreme high kinetic energy so plasma is not common a uh, state of matter here on earth but is actually very common in the universe okay because your stars are actually can produce a plasma state of matter okay your the sun our sun is actually a ball of plasma these are actually charged particles with extreme high kinetic energy because of an extreme high temperature of uh, of stars or or even uh, our, the sun itself okay and because of this it called we can also actually produce plasma when we uh, when we have a noble gases okay when we use noble gases to uh, when we ionize noble gases in a highly extreme uh, temperature in order for them to have high kinetic energy okay the glowing of your noble gases by using electricity is also one way to to ionize uh, uh, to produce a, a, a plasma okay because you are ionizing a noble gases and changing them into a plasma state so example of noble gases that you can ionize to produce a plasma is you have helium and neon argon krypton uh, uh, those are the uh, common uh, noble gases that we can uh, produce uh, plasma okay so plasma is a highly charged particles because we are ionizing them in a high temperature or in an extreme temperature to produce a particles with high kinetic energy okay so the fifth uh, state of matter is commonly known as the Bose-Einstein condensate or BEC so Bose-Einstein condensate is actually a group of atoms cooled to within a hair of absolute zero okay so when you say absolute zero that is what is absolute zero absolute zero is zero kelvin okay so zero kelvin temperature is negative 273 degree celsius so this is absolute zero so it's very cool it's actually super cooling the term there is super cooling so you are super uh, cooling a uh, group of atoms so the experiment there is actually the atoms involved here is a rubidium atom okay rubidium atom so the scientists made a uh, boson okay that, that is what we call a boson already so by supercooling rubidium atoms so when they cooled rubidium atoms in absolute zero they found out that these atoms were actually uh, clumped together or they clumped together so if you have a uh, mini rubidium atoms there okay rubidium atoms they actually, like for example, in this picture, the rubidium atoms there, okay, they actually clump together, they clump together, okay, they clump together to form a one atom, okay? So, to form one atom, which is, they call this as boson, okay? They call that as boson. So, that is what we call the Bose-Einstein condensate. Because at this temperature, atoms are hardly moving relative to each other they they are actually not or they have no free energy okay to move already okay at that state because this is super cooling this is a very cold okay atoms now be, became uh they they become uh they became freeze okay they freeze so they have no free energy to move so they are not moving anymore and they found out that atoms began to clump together okay, rubidium atoms began to clump together to create one single atom which is they call it as boson okay and boson they are actually 
uh, social or they are social. Boys I stand condensate to social because they want to go together. They want to uh, clump together. They want to be together. Okay? Bosons are want to be uh, together. Okay? They want to have another boson. Okay? They, they go together with another boson. Okay? That is what uh, Boyce Einstein condensate is. The bosons there are social. Okay? The last state of matter is not really familiar. Okay? Uh, just like your Bose Einstein condensate, but it's actually called the Fermi Dirac condensate. Okay, your Fermi Dirac condensate is just the same as your Bose Einstein condensate. It is actually a state of matter in its superfluid phase. Okay, it becomes superfluid because of the supercooling of those atoms, and it is actually related to your Bose Einstein condensate. However, your Bose Einstein condensate, uh, you produce a bosons while in Fermi Dirac you are actually producing a Fermi ions, okay? Fermi ions are, is also different from bosons because your boson is social while your Fermi ions are, or firm ions are antisocial, okay? Firm ions are antisocial. That means they don't want to go together, okay? If you have firm ions and another firm ions, they don't want to go to together, just like this picture, okay? You have your bosons, they want to clump together, but in firm ions, they don't want to uh, go together. They don't want to clump together because they are anti-social. Okay, so that is, the, oh, those are the six uh, uh, states of matter. You have your solid liquid gas, and number four is plasma, number five is Bose-Einstein condensate, and the last one is the Fermi-Dirac condensate. Okay, now let's go to the central theme in chemistry. The central theme in chemistry is actually uh, we are going, the both physical and the chemical properties are actually uh, being described because of its macroscopic view, okay? So in macroscopic properties and behavior, we can see uh, this, this kind of uh, behavior, uh, this kind of property is actually physical or chemical because we can see it in our eyes, what is really happening on that substance, okay? However, the result of that property is actually because of the submicroscopic properties and behavior, which we cannot see. Okay? So, what is actually happening on what we can see on our naked eye, it's because of the, of the submicroscopic properties and behavior that we cannot see, that, that the only uh, microscope, we can only see it by just by using a uh, powered a microscope, okay, like for example, electron microscope or any uh, powered microscope, okay. So what are what what is happening on those atoms there, okay? When they be, when they change uh, chemically or there is a chemical reaction or there is a chemical change, so what is happening on the atoms there, or uh, or just like what what we have earlier, okay? So in the Fermi Dirac and also in the Bose Einstein condensate, what are what does the atoms are, uh, what, what, what is happening with all of those atoms there, okay? How do they become bosons, okay? So the, those are cannot be seen on our naked eye, okay? But, but, the, but you can use an uh, electron microscope, of course. So like for example, if you are going to see a, a water, okay? Water is just, it's flowing, okay? Liquid water is just flowing. You cannot see that the atoms there, what is really happening on the atoms, why it becomes, it has the ability to flow, okay? So this is the central theme in chemistry. We describe the microscopic properties and behavior because of the submicroscopic properties. If we can only see the submicroscopic, we can really identify or we can really uh, understand the behavior and the property of a uh, uh, macroscopic uh, substances okay so that's it and the importance of energy in uh, matter okay we know that energy is the ability to do work okay and we have uh, we do uh, when we do work we require energy okay when we lift objects when we go to school when we walk okay when we work 
Oh, we, yes, we, we, of course, you are working, okay? We, uh, we, uh, we use energy, okay, to do that, okay? Uh, when I speak, okay, I use energy, okay? And there are two kinds of energy, your potential energy and kinetic energy. So when we say potential energy is energy at rest and energy due to the position of the object, okay? When you are just sitting there, okay, you are watching uh, uh, this video, okay, you are actually having a potential energy, okay? And your potential energy can be uh, converted into kinetic energy, okay? Then, after, what do you mean by kinetic energy? It's actually energy due to the motion of the object. Okay, like for example, you are eating. While you are actually uh, sitting, you, you eat. Okay, you are eating. Okay, you do some work with your hands. Okay, you are actually having kinetic energy. Okay, to really understand fully the potential kin uh, kinetic energy mechanism or the conversion of potential to kinetic energy, uh, let's have some examples. Okay. So, like, for example, if you are going to lift a, a bar here, a metal bar, okay? Okay, so once you lift the metal bar, so you're actually uh, increasing its potential energy because of the, the pull of the gravity here, okay? So, it's heavy, am I right, if you lift a metal bar, okay? So, in this case, the potential energy is actually increasing. But when you drop it, you are changing that potential energy there into kinetic energy once you drop the metal bar okay so that is what we call the uh, uh, changing in potential energy to kinetic energy okay another thing is that when you stretch two balls with a string okay you are actually increasing its potential energy but when you just uh, but when you release it okay that potential energy between those two balls stretch becomes kinetic energy. And change in potential energy will always be equal to the kinetic energy once you release these two balls uh, to let them relax, okay? And another example is when you attract opposite charges, okay? So these two here, negative and positive, has actually a strong a potential energy when you just let it stay there okay but once they become attracted to each other that potential energy becomes kinetic energy they become uh, attract with each other potential energy now is converted to kinetic energy because of the attraction that pulls them together it's also the same as when you uh, when you uh, fuel your car okay or if you will, uh, your engine, okay? So, a fuel is higher in chemical potential energy, okay? So, you you fuel your engine that is high in potential energy, but once you use that fuel to run that engine, that becomes converted into kinetic energy so that your car will move, okay? So